Hi guys, in this video I'll show you how I adjust rocker arms. Now this is a small block Chevy, but this could be applied to any pushrod motor. And uh, you have to know if you have mechanical lifters, which are solid lifters, or hydraulic lifters, which have a spring in them. Basically, if you can take the lifter out and push on it, and it depresses on the inside, it's a hydraulic lifter. This motor has hydraulic, hydraulic lifters, and there's a couple of things you should know when putting higher ratio rock arms in. Now these are 1.5 Scorpion rock arms. These here are stock ratio on a small block Chevy. Um, if you go 1.6s or 1.7s it usually brings the push rod here inboard so you might have some clearance issues if you go to 1.7s sometimes. Also um, when you, if you do have clearance issues you should have at least a thousandth, of, a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch between the actual push rod and the actual head. Uh, <clears throat> actually, also let me tell you, CarCrafted, there was a magazine article where they actually had, they lost like 40, 50 horsepower because the, the, the push rods were actually, le you know, leaning on the actual heads. So you could lose a lot of power if, if the push rods are rubbing on your heads. So be careful with that. Another thing to take a look at, look at with these uh, Rocco arms is make sure over here, underneath here, you have enough clearance to clear the actual retainer of the valve spring. Sometimes what some racers do is they actually Use, they flight cut over here and sand it down to actually clear this retainer. These are all good. Uh, another clearance issue would be under here. Sometimes the, you're putting an aluminum rocker arm and the actual stud is, has a little shoulder on it and the rocker arm rubs on it. So you have to be careful there too. My recommendation is when you drive the car around after you put them on, may, go back to your valve covers, take them off, make sure there's nothing rubbing or you see no aluminum shavings anywhere here. Another thing also, to, make, to double check that your actual adjustments are all good. These should be all pretty much the same height and the same turns in. Uh, if not, then something's not right, not, not rightly adjusted. Uh, there's, two, there's two ways, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You can, if you have mechanical lifters, you can start the car while it's running. And while it's running, you actually back, the, back this off, the, the, the bolt up here, the nut, sorry, you back it off. And once it's tapping, then after that, once, once you hear a tapping, you start to uh, tighten it down. Once the tapping goes away, that you're a zero lash. And you could just set it and you're good. Uh, if you have hydraulic lifters, you could do the same way. But once you go to zero lash, you go past the half a turn, quarter turn, or a turn, wherever you feel like. Uh, that going past zero lash and hydraulic lifters is more for when you're idling, so you don't hear a tapping noise. Uh, but you make the most power with less turns. Uh, you pretty much have... Uh, more, it's like having more duration on top on the camshaft if you go less turns. The, it'll be instantly at zero. So I'm going to have my friend here just bump this over. I went ahead and I undid the actual uh, set screws in here. These are Allen key, Allen headed bolts. Uh, sorry, set screws. And these are 5 8 inch, inch nuts. And like I said, this could be done in any motor. It doesn't have to be a small block Chevy. This is how you I like to do it on these. Um, what I'm going to show you now is the intake. This is the intake here. If you don't know what's what, you see the intake manifold? This is the intake, the intake uh, rocker. And they, you look at the exhaust, and that's the exhaust rocker arm. Uh, so just the intake, what you do is the exhaust valve has to start, the exhaust valve has to, to start to open. In other words, this has to push down a little bit. And then you could start doing uh, your adjustments on here. That means you're on a base circle of the cam on the, on the intake side. Now to adjust the exhaust side, uh, your intake valve is all the way open and starts to close. So in other words, this is pushed all the way down on the spring. Then once it starts to go up, that means you're uh, on the base circle of the exhaust side. So what we're going to do now is bump the car over and I'm going to do the, the intake side. So the intake side, I said we adjust this when this is uh, just starts to open. One more time. Oh, I stop, I stop. All right. So that just went down a little bit, so it just starts to open. So that means we could adjust the intake side. So let me just get a, get a better angle of this. One second. Like I said, the exhaust side just started to open, just started to push down on this. That means this this push rods on the base circle of the cam here. And what you do is, I like to take the set screw out all the way, and 
take the actual nut out. You grab the push rod here and as you can see here when you move the rock arm up and down is clearance. So that means it's not it's not good yet. So what you want to do is also you can also grab the actual push rod and push it up and down. And some people like to turn it but that that's not a good way to do it. Uh, the best way to do it is to push it up and down to make sure there's no slack there. It's it's butting up right on the on the tip of the rock arm. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. And zero lash is right there. It's perfect. So that's zero lash. I can't push it up and down anymore and the slight tension when I turn the push rod. So here now, I'm going to go a quarter turn past that zero lash. And wherever your your actual wrench is, you go quarter turn, which would be from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So you just go down until there. And now you can go ahead and tighten the actual set screw down. And then now I'm going to do the exhaust side. I like doing it this way because this is this this will guarantee you that you're actually on the base circle over here. So some of these cl uh, click when you when you turn the actual uh, set screw, and that's normal. Let's see if these click. Some don't. So you want to go as tight as you can, and that's good. Now we're going to do the exhaust side. And I said, like I said, the exhaust side. What we do is. Um, right when the intake valve is all the way open and it starts to go back up then we do this one so let's do, go ahead and do this one now the exhaust side actually sorry the exhaust side and I was talking about the intake side it's all the way open and it starts to go up we do the exhaust oh, we passed it so we're gonna keep on going Alright, so it started to go up. Alright, now we're going to do the actual exhaust side. Uh, if I didn't catch that on camera, I apologize, but you could see the other ones, how they were going up and down. And right when, it's, right when this one started to go up, the intake started to go up a little bit. It was all the way down, then it went up a little bit. I know this one's on the base circle here. So, same procedure here. And so once I find zero lash here, I go quarter turn past it because of the hydraulic. So this will be the last one here. And you just turn this by hand. And it's still going up and down. And I think we're good there. So this one's good too. And then you just hold this in place. You don't want this to turn. And you tighten this down as much as you can. You also make tools for this, but you don't have to get them. That's good. So both intake and exhaust side are done in this car. And I'm gonna go ahead now and go all the way around. Thanks for watching uh, my videos. Uh, subscribe to my channel. It's free to subscribe. Just check the box underneath. Uh, check out NewYorkThirdGen.com. It's N-Y-T-H-I-R-D-G-E-N.com. That's where I hang out. I'm the clown. Uh, you can see me there. Uh, you can see some of the nicest, fastest cars in New York there. Also, like my videos. It's free to like me. Just check the box I need for that too. And thanks for watching and take care. Little side note here. I want to show you an example of a rocker that was hitting a rocker stud. See over here, here and here how it ground down from rocking. It pretty much was hitting the shoulder of the head stud. So certain rock arms shouldn't be used with certain head studs. So that's one thing to look out for right there. Okay.